in that famous game, uh, you know, CLG was comfortable with giving it up. They're pretty much the only team, and that's specifically because of Link. He feels fine playing against Zen. Dig, though, not going to give that one away. No. And then it will be that final Kale ban, so we don't get to see top lane Kale again. You can tell which teams have been scrimming against each other, too, coming into <laughs> these weeks, because they'll use similar strategies, and the top lane Kale has yep. been one that Dig has uh, used as well, so they don't want to let this. them do it. Maybe the Kha'Zix? No, the Lulu gets banned out. They do ban out the Evelyn, something Snoopy used yesterday as well to help them get the victory. He's also been on the Kha'Zix, but we see Enox getting himself a carry top laner right off the bat to put himself in a good position. No surprise here, but just locking in a very strong champion like Jax does not mean game over. Oh no, we can't come back <laughs> from this. There are very many uh, options for the opponents when you first pick a Jax like this. Taking it so early, you can go with Renekton to bully him early. You can go with lane swaps and keep him down, trading things to keep down Jack's farm. Um, or you can just go with a team that will not have to split push against that Jax and can force something very easily. Altec on the Twitch, definitely an impact AD carry for him to be playing. Snoopy picking up the Thresh for Crepo. You may all remember Crepo's flash missed hook yesterday, but after that, he flipped a different switch and was hitting every <laughs> death sentence left and right. Yeah, there was one misstep bid. He said that was lag, so the oh, rest of the game, of course, I'll lag. believe it because Has the to. rest of the game, he landed <laughs> that is true. so many really, really good hooks for the team for the rest of the game. Ping pong and, the Pantheon. And got them an extremely, extremely good advantage, which they were able to yep. Uh, snowball into that game victory. Kiwi Kid looking at the Zyra, does lock that in. Shifter wondering and locking in the Syndra. I'm a really big fan of Syndra right now because the mid lane, uh, mid lane one versus ones have been increased in power yeah. because that's really the only time you get these even matchups anymore. The side lanes are all wackadoodle. Everybody's in the jungle <laughs> roaming around. Meanwhile, mid lane, they do get to have 1v1 time with each other. Mm -hmm. And Syndra is extremely strong in that 1v1 scenario. The only thing he has to worry about, as we've seen many mid laners get caught off guard by the three man gank oh. mid after side, uh, after people the leave deals, the side yeah. lane. So still have to watch out for that three man gank mid. But otherwise, a very strong pick. Oriana, very interesting pickup. Definitely a skill matchup coming here that I would probably give to Shifter right in the beginning. Back. Fourth, left, right, looking for an AD carry to make it just right. It's going to be Kiwi Kid. He loves to cycle around on champions. Cutie Pie's like, give me this. Kiwi's like, what about this? How about this? You want to play AD Shivana? How about it? Let's see what happens. Locking in the Shiv. They have the Lucian up top. I'm just playing. So they're going to give that over to Kiwi Kid. He gets him, and Cutie Pie rather, he gets himself his aggression in lane against the Twitch. So it should be good for them. And I'll be surprised if we get another lane matchup. I actually like it, because that was a pretty damn good game. Yeah, they do lock in another tank, a dive buddy for Lee Sin. If they want to go uh, two members diving yep. towards that Twitch, it's actually fairly hard for Lee Sin and a Shivana uh, to stick on a Twitch mm -hmm. going through Thresh. And they also are going to have to be dodging uh, Elise Cocoons and Oriana Shockwave on their way in. So uh, it's going to be hard, but the Syndra is going to be play a big part in setting this up. Very long range sun from her. Right. And she's really good against Jax because she doesn't uh, have to worry about his Counter-Strike at all. And she can front load a lot of her damage into that Jax. We'll see if that's how it plays out. It's always easier to say. As the team loads onto the Rift, it's time to tally the votes over at lolesports.com where Dignitas leads EG with 84%. Another 80% vote coming out. But keep sending your picks by tweeting either hashtag EGWin or DIGWin to LOL Esports. Not only is the Dig team very confident, but the Dig fans extremely confident yeah. coming into this as well. EG, though, they're coming off a really big win, so uh, high spirits all around for those guys. Dignitas probably looking to get under their skin early. We said before, they're a team when they have confidence, they kind of allow themselves to play complacent, but that's the word they've been using the most this year in their interviews is we don't want to get complacent. So we'll actually see if the motivation they're getting now keeps pushing them forward instead of kind of letting them lay back and say, yeah, we're near the top. Yeah, and I think Crumbs is really driving that one home too. Yeah. He's getting in the enemy jungle early. He's getting the vision down that they need to be able to make those counter moves and all of the lanes are thriving because of it. Because of it. Yeah. Now, really the only problems we've seen are those late game trades. If we get to that situation where they're even with EG, can they be outmaneuvered? 
Interesting to see as well. Nidalee going all the way through this one after we playing hard. So we won't see any spears coming in, unfortunately. But still, <laughs> People great have had their gameplay. fill of spears. Yeah. <laughs> Already enough as we're on to the rift now. Game three on day here. On the second day, I should say, of week three. 2.4 gold on each side. Quite even to start, Kobe. But there's a sweeper on the side of Snoopy. What do you think's going to happen? Mm. <laughs> Could go for it. Could signal an early invade. He might clear a war. Um, you can as well still sell just go back and sell it after an invade unheard of. probably will will keep that though on um elise mm -hmm. gank heavy jungler does like to have the uh, freedom to know that uh, she's not in enemy vision uh, it does open up possibilities for the invade though and trying to steal away buffs crepo actually starting relic Going to give a little more golden HP to Alltech. We've seen both Threshes today start with the Ruby Crystal to get that early sight stone out. Yeah, very popular. Uh, and at the point that he does upgrade that to sight stone is where he will be switching out for another sweeper as well. Very telling how early the teams switch over to sweepers. Ooh, looks like uh, they might use this one now, yes. For the red invade. Pays off. They did not leave any, any defensive ward, though. Very true. Cutie Pie. Very like wards Dignitas has just placed to CLG's wards, except for that middle one. Now, this is similar to the LMQ strategy, but like I said, they didn't leave around that defensive ward. So it makes this defense of a red, if they decide to go check that, much, much more dangerous. Um, and it actually turns advantage against them because they have to face check. Even though it's your own bush, doesn't matter where the bush is. Never want to be going into it blind in a level one situation. So they completely avoid it. Look for that lane swap. Um, and we will be seeing the buddy jungle system. Yep. We've been talking a little bit how this kind of affects players like Meteos, who likes to get really heavy farm in the jungle. How's it going to affect Crumbs and Snoopy, who kind of are formulated on getting the lanes going? more than getting themselves picked, so almost yeah. works out. Yeah, Crumbs has been really thriving in this uh, mm -hmm. with the new changes. Uh, the only thing is, it is going to keep that Jax down longer than EG would like. Um, Jax versus Shivana, not as bad as the Jax versus Renekton, but um, he will be relegated to the jungle as well, so it's going to be a while before they see that scaling. Yeah, That's good for Dignitas. They want to be able to press the advantage with their Lee Sin jungle. Uh, as early as possible. Uh, interesting that Dig wanted to put their duo top and not kind of want to go after. Well, I guess, yeah, they are looking with the, the Thresh. They don't want to pretty much get killed. But they have Dragon Pressure now. Very interesting. Usually we see the blue team being the one to switch it up. We'll see if EG can do anything to that. Chat was saying, when is this going to kind of be thwarted? When are people going to move on this early Dragon? Well, every team that goes for the lane swap is right. the dragon is the price that you pay for yeah. this lane swap so every team knows that they're giving away the first one yeah, and yeah. it's been so common that the teams take this dragon at around that three minute mark uh 319 whatever <laughs> um that good call even though even though they've given up this first dragon and yes oh, we always talk about dignitas have the timer for the second dragon mm -hmm. and they can easily chain these it's so common now that every team giving up the dragon should also know the timer, basically have that timer as well. And these teams that are giving up in the initial swap are often looking to counter the second dragon right. to put a stop to that chain of events so that they actually don't get very behind in gold because the first dragon, not worth that much, but the problem really comes from the domino effect uh, and when the rest of them come in. So they should know when it comes back up as well for Evil Geniuses. All right, you can see only 400, 500 gold now. Somewhat ticking on that gold clock. He's going to see that early dragon, like you said, a little bit of help. We'll see where Shifter decides to push Pole Belter in. As everybody's still farming around, no pressure yet, really, to any of the lanes. Yeah. As I uh, talked about before, really the map is kind of uh, switched mm -hmm. where top side uh, becomes <laughs> blue side when they do this kind of switch, and bottom side is red. Right. Now that means um, EG did start their blue buff. So it will come up around the seven minute mark, mm -hmm. seven ten or so. Normal. Now, but the question is, I really want to see one of these blue teams that is looking to stop the chain of dragons actually delay giving their second blue buff over to the mid laner because blue buff lasts that 2.5 minutes without the mastery or three minutes with it. Mm -hmm. If you take it right when it spawns, 
it's not going to be available. It'll run out right when that another uh, second dragon is oh. So if you delay giving your second blue buff over to your mid laner for a little bit, then you can actually save that second blue buff for the dragon fight, where it's really going to be crucial. See, all and everything to be planned out here. It looks like Dignitas has a few planned. Nice what hit. A hit. A little sneaky shot there with the Sonic Wave. A laugh from Alltech. Looks like it's just going to be a little bit of lane soak up here in the top lane. So Crumb's not getting too much off the first initial buddy system visit. Looks like they will be back to the jungle for him. Yeah, pretty much mirrored on both sides. Mm -hmm. Jungle attention now, bomb for Snoopy. Uh, so much about the um, first ganks has been junglers guessing where the other one will gank and trying to play to the strengths of their team. Just everybody's going the safe route, going to their duo lane. Good job there by Sh uh, Shifter. Forcing the flash, Crepo already five minutes into the game, trying to make big impact plays and get this one going. Yeah, talked about that three-man gank. It's annoying, but uh, we saw Shifter have a good good counter to it, long-range stun, and then it's only because Crepo does use his flash that they end up getting a summoner out of Shifter in the end. Didn't feel like trying to dodge that one. Just burns his flash and answer. If you're really confident, then you sidestep that hook because you know it's coming out right after the flash. Uh, but he really didn't want to take any chances at all there. And he's going to have to have wards now in the mid lane. We'll see if he can keep himself safe. Safe Shifter is that mid laner we know who is very good at not dying. Getting a lot of fantasy points for his team. We'll see if he can oh, keep yeah. doing that here. Because with Pole Belter's long range, it will be hard with his flash up and the ignite. That kill potential is there. Clear out from Kiwi Kid and make sure they get some good map coverage and lay out a few more wards as well, just for precaution. And as the lanes uh, sack out into the normal lanes, it's pretty even across the board. It's just that top laners comparatively to the rest of the map are a bit weaker. So they do have to worry a lot about jungle ganks. Uh, those can easily sway that top lane. Mid-low. Oh, Bobelt, they're getting stun. hit. Didn't expect to be getting that much aggression after he blew Shifter's flash, but they turn it on immediately and blow Pole Belters. That makes Shifter's lane much safer as well. You know, that long range stun really, really working out for Shifter so far. Very accurate with it. Mm. First thing that you do have to master when you want to play uh, Syndra. Here's that second blue, though. They give right. it immediately yeah, it's over gonna wear to Oriana, so it'll probably wear out just about the time. Oh, they don't even get to give it over to him. Woo. Crumbs. That's the other thing about going for your buffs on respawn. Everybody in the game knows You're off the map. what the timer is. Yep. So Crumbs right there preys on that knowledge, able to steal it away. And Blind he's done this spike. so many times. That's also how they got their win against Cloud9. Crumbs preyed on that seven minute, giving second blue mm -hmm. buff over to high. That time though, he went for the kill on high and he got it. This time around, he goes for the buff steal because Pope Belter took the safer route around. Either yep. way though, very similar effect here. We'll see if he sticks around because 2v2 looks spicy in the top lane. Dignitas early, three sweepers matched by EG here as everybody's kind of taking this under their wing. We see the early sight stones quickly coming out for people and then the sweepers to do it. And Dig is only just controlling more of the map here. <laughs> Crumb stays to the top lane. Doesn't look like Inox is going to be having fun. So it's a dangerous dive because Snoopy was waiting in the bush, but they got Inox to 200 HP under his own turret already. Doesn't matter that Snoopy was there for the counter gank. Uh, they've already taken so much of his life away that there's you know nothing that EG can really salvage from this situation. 30 seconds on Dragon. Culling being used to drop the HP bars. Good sidestep by Crepo. Level six here for Cutie Pie. They're trying to get pressure here and possibly on this close objective. That Ardent Blaze right into Culling is uh, one of my favorite moves mm -hmm. for Lucian that we've been seeing so much of lately. And then you dash while you're calling too. Yeah. It just feels so good. Looks good too. <laughs> <laughs> See if they can actually handle this bottom lane though because big BF sword for Cutie Pie. Oh, great harass with the piercing lights. Yeah, that's the BF sword damage. Even though Altec <laughs> does have sustain with his Vamp Scepter, it's not enough. He doesn't even stick around for the canyon uh, actually for Crepo to give over. So that's a pretty big loss there for Evil Geniuses. And that right there, yep. it just cut away, <laughs> but it's a good bluff from Crepo. Whenever you're Thresh, you can play that game and just throw your lantern back at random times. Just willy-nilly, huff it anywhere. Exactly. Because you gain two things with that. Either your opponents back off because they respect it, 
or um, they get they get lax and they're like, oh, he's he just keeps on bluffing. But then <laughs> when you actually come in with the gang, you pull in Jack. Your enemies do not react, and you get a win there. Dragon is very much alive right now and looking to be fought. Who's going to be the first one to step up to the plate, though? Dignitas has the ward coverage, but not as much as they would like. Chrome's with the sweep, and they don't have anything past the dragon pit where Snoopy is kind of hovering right about now. Crumb's looking to get that pink ward down. Let's see if he places it knowing they can't control it. No, he waits. He waits. Yeah. Uh, he does have, uh, as Crumb's pretty much always does, both yeah, kinds two, of wards in his wards. inventory, plus sweeper already. Four sweepers switched out right now for Dignitas. Oh, Gifter, though, goes the not enough burst. spears on the ground. Good hit, though. The blue buff keeps him up and up in the lane, and he'll still be able to throw out the same amount of damage with the regular ability. Uh -oh. This is not looking good. Short Dragon's hop. Descent is there, but the HP is not. Also extremely uh, dangerous for him to dive that. Yeah. But that aggression means that they won't see a teleport in from Inox. Dignitas decided to start up the dragon because Shifter just blew his combo, taking out all of Pobelter's HP. Most of Pobelter's HP. Oh. Look at the what in the... That was, that was a good ball, what in the... Yeah. Uh, so he gets locked up. Great job by Kiwi Kid there. <laughs> Locking him up. But Snoopy a little bit too close to that dragon. As we said, Shifter just blew his whole combo to take yeah. down uh, most of Pobelter's life and forced him back to base. They take advantage of that situation, knowing that even though they didn't get the kill, he can't join Dragon. Good consecutive pickups there right. for Dignitas. And EG have not been able to stop that chain. We'll see if the third one, yeah. they can make a stand, because they do have wards down there. And everything else is ticking against EG around the map, too. We have to remember that last blue buff was stolen over to Crumbs, so there's still been lane control loss here and jungle control loss by Evil Geniuses with 3k gold lead for Dig. They're not even wards above them, really, but they know they're safe. They see everybody on the map, according to the wards that Crumbs has been clearing and placing. Yeah, and he needs to continue to do that. Yep. Uh, invading the jungle here is getting more vision. He knows that this e EG team, if they let up pressure, then it's going to be bad for them late game. They mm -hmm. don't want to face that Jax and Twitch late game because there's so much CC to supplement those two carries on Evil Genius. Uh-oh, Snoopy, though, takes a big chunk. Ooh. Crumb's starting off with the Sonic Wave and a Resonating Strike. He's going to wait it out. See, Dignitas, they don't hesitate to use their ultimates for large chunks of damage. Even though they aren't getting these kills, they keep on taking EG so low that EG can't contest any of the objectives. So Dignitas right there, even though Crumb's no kill, again, another objective. They get and control the of top lane here. He can deny plenty of minion waves. And there's the blue uh, respawn that you mentioned. Once again, Cutie Pie getting the second turret of a game. He loves turrets, and he loves taking them down. Here, Cutie Pie saying he just wants to crush his opponents harder. So far, the rest of the team allows him to do that. He's just under the highest CS of Pole Belter right now, 110. And Everybody very, knows. very smart here by Dignitas. Since they were afforded that dragon without having to use their teleport because of the play mid, he saves it and he's able to use it to grab extra experience, which is right. the dream of every top laner right now <laughs> to be able to get two solo lanes worth of experience, getting top lane shoved into turret and then soaking up bottom. Zion is in a very good spot to keep down Inox for right. the mid game here. And it kind of shows, as you were saying, Dig just dealing that amount of damage to push people out of lane. If you look at Inox, he's about 30 CS down, but he hasn't died yet because he's always getting out with that low amount of health, the non-kill pressure. Like the kills are there, but Dig's just not worried about getting them. They're worried yeah. about winning the lanes. And that is due to EG's game plan. They've been spending resources up top yeah, to keep Inox true. alive. They, Snoop A has been visiting up there pretty much every chance he gets. However, every time he's also Trump been gets the jump on him. <laughs> He is just reading Snoopy like a book right now, and Snoopy unfortunately seems to be walking up on crumbs and giving him the situations on the other hand as well. Kiwi Kid going deep, could be in trouble. Yeah, uh, he does have Inox on his tail here. Boom, it's the Counter-Strike. That's the Empowered Slap. He oh! flashes the pop-up. It's going to be a Grasping Roots just after, and there is no follow as the flash was already used from Inox. Yeah, you can't flash all the way across the Zyra ulti there. Still mm -hmm. gets knocked up. Does lose the Summoner spell, so actually pretty big loss for Inox. Cutie Pie for three turrets now. All the way across, coast to coast, from bottom to top. Cutie Pie drops the front line. Yeah, very hard for EG. Big Pie's doing the... The perfect thing here, keeping up that early aggression. Uh, they do not want to let this Evil Genius team soak up any money, get them any free time to scale into late game at all. 
Um, and those trades that we're talking about with Snoopy and Crumbs in the jungle, mm -hmm. everybody always mentioned lane trades and favorable lane trades is how you get you know the big advantage there in the one versus one scenarios. But jungle trades are just as important because it keeps on sending Snoopy back to base, and it also means yeah. that Snoopy cannot venture into Dignitas territory to get vision. Look at the map. He has been countered every time he tries to cross this yep. river. Crumbs is there. He drew the line in the, in the water <laughs> instead of the sand, and Crumb says, you are not allowed on this side of the map. And they're focusing that top side of the jungle as well, putting enough wards down exactly as they did on Cloud9. Just the flip side. Uh oh Crumb is fake checking off. this time. Kicks him away. Kicks away the brunt of what the damage would be coming from. Keeps himself safe. He's got back up there. He's very secure in these invades, yeah. because at this point in the game, these strong early lanes from Dignitas have translated into full control. All outer turrets down, there's no perimeter defense for EG, and Dignitas continue the invades. A little bit slow on that one, though. Weren't able to come away uh, with the buff steal. Just like Dignitas is still playing right as rain here. Even coming off a loss, they're not, don't seem to be second guessing themselves in any situations. They kind of kept their composure so far throughout the game and have really put a foot down. Yeah, there's no need to. At this point, 51 CS lead for Zion in the split push strategy. So him versus Inox, he is very, very okay in that situation. Uh, he can easily continue to keep that pressure up on top side of the map. So it frees up the entire bottom side uh, for all these pink wards of Dig to start making their way into EG territory. EG, though, everybody congregating mid. And everybody with a ward. Inox just laying his down to get eyes on Zion Spartan in the top lane. Four sweepers out now for Dignitas to shut down those ward purchases for EG. But they are still remembering the little things, trying to keep Ooh. themselves in the game the vision game as well. Zion Spartan coming from the backside, a lot of pings coming in as you can hear. Crepo could be going down here, just gets outside of his own box. And they get safety from the dragon. He also got the very important exhaust summoner spell down, one of the most important combat summoners for any team here. That's very big win for Dig, even though they trade ult for ult there. Uh, exhaust down for this next dragon is a very, very good sign for them. Oh, last shot not made. Cutie Pie looking to get his fourth turret of the game. He is a demolitionist coming into this one against Evil Geniuses. Dragon goes down. We'll see that in another seven. Pretty good plays coming in so far. Yeah, they haven't been able to stop that Six. chain. That Six. domino. The domino dragons. Uh, it's really been a downfall. Yep. A lot of these teams that are making, they're taking late game teams and they're mm -hmm. doing the lane swaps and they just haven't been able to intervene at any of the early Oh dragons. man, another blue as well going over. 184 to 158. Got to give credit to Poe Belter for keeping himself up in CS and really staying alive this game. Only one death throughout this game. And a lot of, as we said, Dignitas pressuring and just constantly using alts to get the lanes won. Full control here yep. from Dig. 6k gold. Um, maybe EG are going to fall into their old uh, patterns of making desperate moves because right now it's actually recommended. They they really need to get some sort of pick on mm -hmm. a Dignitas member that is by themselves. Uh, this, the weak one of the pack, the straggler. They need to get somebody out of position. Digger really not giving them anything though. Constantly keeping up uh, the vision here. Double sightstone for them as expected with Elisa and Jungle. We have seen the EG comebacks. We actually saw a deficit of 3K today when Cloud9 was able to win their game. It was just a few catches they needed to get to get that win in as well. We'll see if EG can do it. Crepo had a very hot game yesterday on Thresh. If he can start to hit in the hooks, like you said, those single catches almost, Oof. they can start making some plays. They're a little split for this one. They got to watch themselves as well, though. You see that? I mean, Dig just have so much vision. It's doubled up. He had a ward that was just killed by Krepo in the bush. However, he has one over the wall as well. What? Able to dodge the hook and get behind. Wow, Almost the, the ball movement play in his favor. Zion Spartan to the back line already. Pobelter is the one to crowd control and change the fight here for EG, but he can't even get into the fray. Great that was almost the YouTube highlight from Crumbs. <laughs> really close. <laughs> but that was a great dodge. Great mindset. He's trying to hit the hooks. Burn okay, out. Big dragon to be hooking right there. I remember Dignitas has one shot on the turret in the bottom lane, so if they start going heavy and getting turrets down, they have even more to take, and it's going to be a big influx of 
control and gold, even more gold. Yeah, and PewDiePie also has that sheen, so even if they're on, ooh, I'll take with the mini game win. Takes that big blue wraith. Uh, Cutie Pie, though, uh, a Lucian with a BF plus Sheen is yeah. extremely efficient at taking small pot shots at turrets. So even if they only get a small window during a uh, shift or stun, he could take a large chunk out of that tower. Ooh. They're spending a teleport and all members, basically, to try and kill Cutie Pie here. So Cutie Pie, only one assist for the AD carry, but they want to get him off the map. He's been creating too much pressure in these solo lanes by himself. Ooh, there's Zig and Zag, bro. That's crap. Uh-oh, Crumb's on the backside. Crumb says, sorry, not going to come into that one. They're going to be forced to actually make their way all the way out of this. All right, so EG spent pretty much everything that they possibly have yeah, to that's... kill Cutie Pie. However, they are getting something out of this. They get a turret out of it. You know, mid lane was pushed from minions, so it was a good time to go for something like that. Can they get back and defend that top turret, though? Because Inox actually used his teleport for the gank. He doesn't have it now to use it in defense of the top lane. We'll see how Dig can really set this one up. EG knows they have a little bit of ground that they can cover here with those deaths happening, or I should say that death, but they will not decide to push that. Not enough ward coverage coming in. Looks like Dignitas is going to head back out. They got the pink wards ready, and they're going to reclaim the map. Yeah, and Dig are closing on, on some really, really strong power spikes here. They've got the two-item Syndra already death cap completed, and then Lucian almost at that Trinity Force. Keep talking about Cutie Pie. Once they have both those threats double items, that's pretty much curtains for evil geniuses. Already they're using this really, really strong tank Shivana that they've been able to feed oh. for a very early Baron. Yeah, I was going to say, that's pretty scary coming out. Krepo's going to be taking a lot of shots. Calling is up, calling is out, and he stops it with the grab. Flashes along, nobody in the lantern to safety, but Krepo puts himself in a good spot. In the box, maybe not, but the team is going to be safe on the disengage. Good save from what could have been bad. Yeah, EG all have to be real careful because that Syndra ulti is still up. If yeah. there are just two spheres on the too. ground, someone's dead. Everyone getting, if you get taken to half life, you have to back off immediately. There's things that are good about living, but being low health means it's going to be even scarier to bring the team back into the fight. This could be a call that Ooh. not many for follow for again. EG. That's going to be the ultimate coming in onto Inox. He goes down with the Spears. A double kill as Shifter just cues and places another one on the floor. That's going to be Baron coming in 22 minutes into the game for Dignitas on that call. Syndra is one of the best champions for this division game around Baron. It's one of the reasons why uh, the Chinese team really, really like to use Syndra for all of their late game Baron fights because if she has Fog of War advantage, her stun is so long and her right. burst is so strong, all it takes is one little sphere to knock you and boom, he gets home. Yeah, let's see that one more time. Look at the well, vision there, there that EG doesn't have. Dead. It was a good cocoon into Hook, yeah. but uh, it basically just cost him his death because, as I said, those guys were already chunked out. They're below Half-Life. And we're seeing it, around a, a different Dignitas, very calculated. When they know how much power they have or how much they can push after doing damage, they take just the right amount. And usually at the Baron, it would get scary, but there, they seem to clean things up. Not only do they get that Baron, Dragon pops up right after. Oh, yep. They still have complete control of the map, easily taken by Dig. Very, very strong early game played by them, and they're rolling it very well towards mid. See how they do play the Siege? Because, as we said, it's very easy for them, uh, for Cutie by specifically, to take large bites out of a turret in a very short period of time, minimizing his at-risk uh, time under that turret. He only has to be in there for a second. Whoa, Altec is going so deep. Very close. Altec hits onto Cutie Pie. The calling goes out as answer. Looks like neither of them will get too much on. Just an AD carry back and forth as they move up the lane. Dignitas trying to control the pressure on the map. And start moving up. Zion's partner just having fun in the bottom lane. Nobody really knew about him. Inox will do what he can, counter-strike for a few more turret shots, but they got to be careful. We're going to have Crumbs possibly coming around or pushing the top lane. This is going to start to be that dig 1-3-1 if they yeah. want it. You can see who the real alpha is there. As soon as Zion gets out of turret aggro, he turns right around on Inox. Yeah. <laughs> Just turn back on Burnout. Take a bite out of crime. 
Three to one are the kills. A very big ultimate onto Crepo, the one who's been trying to make the plays and get the hooks. They shut down that crowd control and safety utility for the rest of the team. This is going to be the turret. Cutie Pie's on it quite quick. He gets the fourth turret of the game for himself. The one in the bottom was dropped, so we'll give him that one too. All five for Cutie Pie. Kiwi goes down, but he got his ult off. He got the full combo. Yep. That's worth it for them. That's the that's a risk you take when you play Zyra, especially the spell penetration AP. He's just Zyra. trying to rack up that death award. He did the damage. Solidifying it. Here's that damage onto the turret. Those few pepper shots that Cutie Pie puts on with the Sheen passive after shooting and then getting the two clicks in. Baron still ticking away. A little bit of time left on that for Dignitas. Looks like they have actually just Man. about a minute left. So four minutes pretty much on Baron's spawn. Zion look at this so one more. Dead right now. There's the pick by Kiwi. The great knockup as well. They secure two the kills off of it. Yeah, it was a shockwave to make Kiwi pay for it. Yeah. But that's just one kill. They still lost the turret after as well. So Dignitas uh, still in that very, very commanding lead. And you can see what Dick does before, during, and after all those wards down on the bottom side of the jungle. How would you lose a fight? You can get everywhere. There's one ward placed in the fighting position there for EG. That means Dick cleared some on the way out. Give him that credit. As EG tries to set back up now, Dignitas is not going to be waiting too much longer on this. 5-0-0 zero, zero. Shifter, the man that doesn't die, seems to be keeping himself alive. Exactly. He's got all of Dignitas kills right now as well. <laughs> Uh, that's definitely the fantasy pick of the year so far. Definitely Shifter. Um, There's a 32 some KDA after yesterday's game. It changed a bit. Yeah, and look how crazy. Uh, you know, going with that Zanyas instead, it's because Dick or uh, EG have not had time even to buy any magic resist. They've been kept down so much from the early games, just starved out. That the first Negatron cloak just now comes in for Snoop and everybody wow. else is still very much prone to that uh, Syndra damage. He doesn't need to go third item Void Staff, which is extremely common. Rush right into that Zanyas to afford him more protection. He probably will not die for this game. Red team's destroyed. And Nox giving the team back what they can in little bits, but it looks like he's gonna be called down here to the inhibitor. This is gonna be a forced fight. Cobelter with that shockwave up, but everything needs to hit, and that's one of them. It goes out of the crowd control. He flashes out of the shockwave. Huge dodge by Cutie Pie. Answers back with a culling. Almost drops Capo, but he gets a good guy heal from Alltech. Very nicely done to save the team, but Dig is pushing strong right now. It looks like they're going to be able to grab a little bit more. Yeah, a couple flashes out of the shockwave, and it's going to be decimation of the evil genius base here. No, no CC to really worry about, too. That's what EG count on. Oh, no! That's the Zanyas going out. Crumbs gets in with 500 HP to get a kick onto Crepo. Still being useful, even though he could go down in a single hit. Snoopy running for the base. Zion Spartan so big in this game right now. And he's going to be up with the rest of the damage to take down the inhibitor. They're looking for Nexus turrets at 28 minutes. Yeah, very, very convincing win here from Dig. Very calm execution. Strong play from the beginning. Great jungle control from Crumbs coming out. Constant blue buff steals. He safeguards himself. Almost goes down to minions. Yes, he does go down in the end. Alltech picks up another kill. It's going to be a 28 minute win for Dig over Evil Geniuses. Just such a dominating early game there. Strong uh, lanes for Crumbs to work off after the swap played out. And he keeps up plenty of vision. Huge chunks of Evil Genius HP being taken out left and right across the map, affording Dignitas many an objective. What a game. Shifter getting his roam on this time. Getting a bit of help from Crumbs as well. Five kills for Crumbs. Or I'm sorry, five kills for Shifter, four assists for Crumbs. And I'm sure a lot of those were those two in the buddy system back and forth, helping.